Hello everyone, I am Prashansa Kultreshta. I work as a senior software engineer at Kong and today I'll be discussing about distributed tracing and the cost problems that come along with it. So let's begin. So at a glance, I'll be first talking about like in a brief what tracing is and how and when the cost problem actually arises. And then I wish to take you all on a journey with me where I'll tell you about all the experiments I did to encounter this cost issue, what things failed, what worked for me, and finally what sane enough solution we reached round to. So yeah, let's begin. So firstly, tracing is a way to record and visualize how a request flows through a system. Now, this system could be a bunch of interconnected microservices, some infrastructure components, databases, etc. And in such a distributed system, suppose you don't have tracing enabled, then debugging an issue is like solving a confusing jigsaw puzzle. You don't know where the issue is. Whereas with distributed tracing, things become much more simpler. You have a detailed timeline which exactly maps to the point where something started breaking up. So yeah, it becomes easy. But again, there are no free lunches. So in tracing too, you are supposed to sample your spans. So only a handful of the data which tracing generates will be available to you. And sampling can be done in two different ways. First is head-based sampling. Here, the decision to keep or discard a trace is taken right at the beginning of a request journey. So it's like a lottery system. So here you don't know whether you'll end up with an important trace which has some information or just an uneventful trace and miss out on something that is important. And another one is stale-based sampling where the decision to keep or discard a trace is taken at the end of the request journey. So you have more information here, more feedback to act on. And based on that, uh, based on this sampling algorithm, you can actually have some processors, some algorithms to decide that uh, what, what's your preference, like what uh, spans you need and what not. So mostly people opt for tail-based sampling after they realize the benefits, but it's much more complex and difficult to implement and manage. And uh, if you think about this in a monetary perspective, it's like you have a lot of requests coming in that will produce a lot of uh, trace data, and now you need to store it to process it. And if you add an external APM provider here, like in the picture, then that means you need to send all your trace data to such providers and they'll charge you for the storage and processing. So as your company scales, as more and more requests come in, uh, you're gonna send, uh, end up sending more and more data to your APM trace provider, and they're gonna charge you along with the service for the storage and processing of that data. So nevertheless, as you scale, they are also gonna get richer, so they'll be happy too about your progress, but yeah, you'll end up paying very, very hefty bills. So, Tracing is essential, we love traces, we just established that tracing needs to be there for us. But are all the traces essential? I mean, are all traces created equal? Well, once you see the bill, which most developers don't, it is seen by the SREs, the platform teams and all. Once you see that bill, maybe you wouldn't decide to keep all the traces that you do. So here's where our journey starts. Here I'm going to like tell you about all the things that I did. So firstly, it all began with a brilliant idea that I had. It was simple to implement, it was simple to you know, visualize, so we decided to go for it. Spoiler alert, it failed miserably. So the idea was using mixed modes of sampling. What I was doing is for my critical set of services, ones which were very core to the business or you know, prone to failure, I was using tail sampling with them and everything else was using head-based sampling. I forgot a key thing here that these services, they're not isolated, they're working with each other. So now imagine a scenario where one service decides to keep a trace but the other one decides to drop it because they're using completely opposite sampling algorithms. The result is a broken tracing experience, a lot of chaos and a lot of blind spots. It also led to a cultural issue where teams started blaming each other because the trace is broken, we don't know where the problem arises, so it just became, it's your service, it's my service, it's not my service, which was a much more difficult issue to deal with than technical issues. So we had to revert that back. We started again from the beginning and uh, I noticed uh, a few things. I noticed that the span has a lot of attributes which are duplicated or unnecessary to me, like they're not adding any insight for me. 
So I decided to drop those attributes. So if anyone may have used an external APM provider, I do not wish to name them particularly, but they do provide some drop rules, which are like simple queries that you can write, which will filter down data for you or filter down the span attributes for you. So this is what I was using here. I was filtering out all the span attributes that were not adding any insight for me. And I thought it will give me some breathing room. Uh, it did give a little breathing room, but it also led to some UI rendering issues. So it turned out that things that were useless for me were a bit important for my APM provider to render their UI. And if you see here, uh, like there's one attribute called GUID, but it, it is repeated four times with the same value, but in different formats. And turned out everything, like all these four were necessary. So at this point, I was paying for my APM provider service, the storage and processing of my data, and their bad code. So I didn't like doing that. So the next trial I did was, I guess, enabling tail sampling for all the services. Initially, when I had mixed modes of sampling, it was chaotic. So we said, thought that, OK, everyone gets tail sampling, but we are going to put in a few ground rules. So we are going to accept only those spans that show some latency information or some error information. And rest everything would be dropped. Again, we were using the drop rules here that are provided by the APM providers. So. This was a point where things became a much more difficult for us because we were only accepting a handful of spans. So in a way, I wouldn't call it tracing anymore. I mean, I implemented it, but to me also, it was like a point where I had hit rock bottom and it was not something that was worth having. We again had some issues of incomplete traces. We had those blind spots much lesser than earlier, but still, this was not tracing in my opinion. And again, we were paying a lot of network cost as well, egress cost. We were still sending all the traces, all the spans to the provider. And then they, will, they were yeah, dropping uh, some data for us based on our filtering logic. So at this point, I decided that I do not wish to be at the mercy of my external APM provider. So fortunately, we had some reversals in luck. We had some great ideas. and. Uh, here enters open telemetry. So what open telemetry let me do is use a custom sampling algorithm where I could write my own algorithm for sampling data where I can decide what's important for me and what not. So with custom sampling, we were able to get rid of a lot of unnecessary spans which reduced our costs. So the rule is simple here. You just uh, so you just take those spans that add some insight for you and rest everything should be dropped. So let's take an example. So here's a custom sampler that I wrote in JavaScript. And uh, if you see, there are two blocks here. In the second one, uh, all spans that are of type middleware, if any of such span is found, the decision is not to record them. So these include a lot of JSON parsers, your file system parsers, and stuff like that. All these uh, middleware kind of spans would be removed. And if you see the first box, it says that if a skip attribute is set as true, just discard it. So what you can do here is, uh, for all those functions in your microservices that don't contribute to the observability of the system, just decide to skip them. And there are plenty of functions in all microservices like that. For example, some formatting functions which uh, display your output in a certain way, or some filtering functions that act on your input to remove spaces or new lines, or you know, converting your underscores to dashes. There are a bunch of them. So for all those things, we can just add a skip attribute set as true, and it won't make past this custom sampler. And this is just one simple sampler that we had used. You can use all kinds of complex logic based on span name, span kind, context information, et cetera. So uh, consider a simple service, like book service, and I'm using a fetch endpoint here to fetch all the books. So if you see, without custom sampling, there are around 10 spans. Three of them in the top are middleware spans, and there's this one for formatting books, like which formats the output of how it is displayed. Initially, there are 10 spans, and post sampling, it is reduced down to six. The middleware and the format function spans are removed. Now just consider a bit of a connected architecture where there are three services, books, customers, and orders. Here, there are a total of 87 spans in a simple fetch orders endpoint. 
post custom sampling this has reduced to 53 so in both these examples with a very simple custom sampler we were able to reduce approximately 40 percent of the spans so this is a lot of cost reduction that you can have and as I mentioned, you can take the sampling decisions on all different kinds of things. I did it on the span attributes. You can decide on span names, the span kinds, like internal server, client producer, etc. Whatever makes sense to you should be added there. And like it's up to you to add more creativity here and reduce more costs. The next thing we did was use an open telemetry collector with some tail sampling processors. So hotel collectors are a pretty hefty topic in themselves. So I'm not going to cover it in details, but in brief, you can consider that like it's an intermediary which sits between your services and your external API provider. So what this would do is take in all your spans, do some processing on it, and then send your uh, filtered out spans or processed spans to your external API provider. So this can end up saving a lot of egress cost for you as well. So there are a bunch of policies that come inbuilt with your tail sampling processor that OpenTelemetry provides. We use two of them, and the example is shared here. One is a latency-based, where a trace will only be accepted if any span shows uh, a latency duration of 100 milliseconds. Or it would be accepted if it shows some sort of 5 xx error. An entire trace, uh, like since tail sampling takes the decision at the end of the request journey. So your entire trace can be uh, checked, the spans can be checked, and the decision to keep or discard the trace can be taken here. So with a combination of custom sampling and tail sampling processors and hotel collectors, you get yourself a smarter tracing system that doesn't break your bank. Our goal is simple here. We need insight into the system and not bankruptcy. So with that, thank you, everyone. And thanks for your time.